Jason said, although my name tag actually just says math on it. Um, so I'll, I'll respond equally to math or Angelina. Um, and I work for um, um, a place called Mozilla. Um, and this is me on Twitter uh, for all of you time travelers in the audience, because right now I'm going to pretend it's mostly the year 2000. Um, I'm trying to think right now what Angelina was doing in the year 2000. I would have been about 15, which probably means that, I, you know, so at that point I've been building websites and programming uh, things like random stuff and playing video games for maybe about five or six years. My first website was on Angel Fire. It was all about my favorite animal, the dolphin. Um, I pronounce it, no, no, I'm, I'm, not, even, I'm not even joking. I wish, that, I, wish I, I wish I had an archive of that somewhere. Um, the ones that came after that were, were on GeoCities and they cataloged my really sweet video game music MIDI collection. Um, and yeah, so I was 15. I was probably like hacking on websites in my mom's basement and like stealing her liquor. Um, not much has really changed. I just don't live in my mom's basement anymore. Um, and I can afford my own liquor, so that's good. Um, but yeah, that's me on Twitter if you like um, occasional complaining, sometimes tweets about code and a lot of cuddly animals. Um, and like I said, I work at Mozilla. Um, <laughs> so. You may have heard of our web browser, Firefox, which at the year 2000 has, well, well, I think we had like something like maybe 7 to 10 percent, depending on what uh, browser share um, you know, statistics that you looked at. Um, and so I, I know that even though I'm from Mozilla, and most of you are probably Internet Explorer developers in the room, given that 86 to 90 percent of you are using Internet Explorer, um, don't worry. The information I'm going to share with you today about SEO is applicable to anybody using any kind of browser. So first of all, what is SEO? I mean, Jen spoiled it a little bit. I'll, I'll tell you how I like to personally define it as search engine optimization. OK, so well, what does that mean? Um, based on this really awesome chart that I found on the internet, uh, I can tell you that Jen is absolutely correct. Um, uh, clearly somebody who knows uh, Photoshop and knows how to render things in 3D and therefore is smarter than all of us in the room made this fabulous graph, which is what I thought is like, holy shit, I have to do my talk on SEO for DHTMLConf because it is more important than idea, it is more important than code, and it is more important than design. So. There are three parts to, or sort of three key skill areas that you want to have to get into search engine optimization, um, which uh, are technical. Um, and I think since I'm talking to a group of advanced webmasters here, that largely you guys are going to be okay. Um, you need to have technical skills. So you need to know about your, your HTML tags. You need to know about your DHTML tags. You need to know about like some CSS. That new thing, I don't, I don't know if it's going to catch on, but we'll see. Um, and you, uh, you know, then you take those technical skills and you look at your on-page optimization, which is largely what we're going to talk about here today, and your off-page optimization, which is a lot of handshaking and buying links. So the first thing you want to do, I mean, like, like what this really gets you is, I mean, the first thing you do is you optimize your site for search engines. Um, and then after that, that gets you more traffic. That's your end goal here with your search engine optimization. Uh, step three, it doesn't really matter. And step four, you make money. And I learned all this from this really great book, um, make money online now, the simple strategy that made me an internet millionaire. Um, I'm actually a Dogecoin, I'm a Dogecoin Dogeillionaire, so um, that, that counts as far as I'm concerned for being an internet millionaire. Um, and then I found this graphic, which was, this is just amazing. I mean, let's just take this in here. So first, like, do you start at this, where do you start, right? Like, do I start on that side? Okay, I'm gonna pretend I start with website won't rank because like, I, I just don't actually have one right now. If you go to my website, realityhacking.net, it's just an Nginx page and somebody tweets me about it every day. I'm just being lazy. Um, so my website won't rank. Um, scream, rant, shout, shake fist. That was before I got here, so we're good. Uh, buy links. Um, hey, you, we can talk later. Um, website still won't rank. Scream, shout, shake fist. Anyway, um, so hopefully I'm going to teach you some things here uh, that will keep this cycle um, a lot shorter. So one of the things you might be asking yourself is, is maybe you've heard that there are companies, people out there that are SEO professionals, and you might be asking yourself if you want to hire one of those SEO professionals. After, after you know, being an SEO professional myself for basically 80 years, um, I happen to know everything about SEO, and I can tell you that if you are an advanced webmaster and you know how to do some of the tricks in this presentation, you will be totally, totally fine. Um, in fact, if you know how, to, most of you are probably writing your web pages in uh, front page. Some of you might be using Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver is pretty hot right now. I used to, oh, it's 2000, so I use Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver is pretty great. Don't use it for WYSIWYG, but actually, in terms of like syntax highlighting as a, as a code editor, it was it was ahead of its time, in my opinion. Um, so this is my advice to you and how you can get your website to rank well. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, you need to be submitting your search engine or su submitting your site to search engines and directories. Um, and this is 2000. So actually, it takes Google about four to six weeks to process your submission and rank your site on, 
on their search engine, or at least that's what uh, a bunch of sites will tell you. Um, so you want to be submitting your site often and regularly and early. You probably should have done it four to six weeks ago. Now this is a quote from a web page, um, and I love this. It says, a true search engine optimization specialist knows the difference between a search engine and a directory. And now that, so, <laughs> that's right. So by extension, if you know that and you're in the room right now, you are a true search engine optimization specialist, and I bet you didn't even know it. Thanks, clicks.com, and that's clicks with a Z, by the way. Um, this is a blank slide, and I actually really don't know what was supposed to be here. So um, I'm going to then mention that some search engines happen to be Yahoo, uh, Alta Vista, um, Lycos, which as I mentioned earlier, if you go to Lycos.com, it still exists as a search engine, which kind of blew my mind. Um, Ask Jeeves, which when I was like 13 or 14, I just freaking loved Ask Jeeves because I liked to picture this tiny little robot person that was like there in behind a computer and answering it for me. And then my brother suggested me one day, but like, what if there actually is a Jeeves, Angelina? Like, what if there's just this guy and he's sitting there and all he does is search for people? And I was like, holy shit, actually, that's pretty heavy. Um, and then MSN kind of ended up being a player in the game. And as for direct I don't think I actually created a slide for that, but there was like, oh, there's open directory and there was like, uh, Yahoo had a directory and that's like the only two that ever really come up. Oh yeah, Google, I guess they're pretty important, hey? Who knows what's gonna happen with them? Um, okay, so this is another favorite of mine, this chart. This chart someone made to represent sort of like the search engine share at the time. And you've got, see, you actually see Google taking up a big chunk here, Yahoo, MSN, and Ask. And my favorite thing about this was the way the chart was described with an asterisk underneath it. Disclaimer, the pie chart image is not an exact representation of market share for any company mentioned, but simply a visual presentation for educational purposes. Translation, this doesn't fucking mean anything. <laughs> this is bullshit. But I just really wanted a chart to make my content fleshed out. And I I just, I love that because it's, it's honest without being honest at all. Um, so really, I mean, so like the shortcut here, you know, the short answer to what you want to do for SEO is, is you need to focus on keywords. No matter what you do with your website, you want to make sure that you have um, uh, particular sets of words, usually, you know, two to four, two to four or, or phrases, you know, two to four words in length that will, um, uh, you know, search engines will index and find them and then you'll rank for those particular search terms. So it depends if you have like an alpaca farm or if you're doing like website design and development or if you're selling some sort of widget. And um, you might ask, how do you know what sort of keywords to target? Well, the first thing you want to do is probably copy your competitors. Um, just go take a look at their websites, go look at their source, and uh, take a look at what it is they're trying to sell. If you're competing with them, uh, use the same keywords, but maybe put them in your site more often. And as I mentioned, two to four words in length is about the optimal uh, length that, that these search engines are looking for. Uh, another thing you want to do is probably have a good domain name. It should also have keywords in it. Um, a, a important thing is that uh, search engines will actually rank sites hosted on your own domain a lot higher than if you're a subdomain or if you're um, on a free site place like uh, Angel Fire Geocities. You want to get off that um, and afford your own domain. So here's an example of a, of a domain, right? So here, this one's pretty good. Uh, there's in newmillenniumwebdesign.com. Maybe your keyword is web design, so you're going to rank okay with that. But you can still do a little bit better, right? Like you might as well, since there's no limit on how long a domain name can be just like stuff it in there. Um, but I mean, don't stop, right? Like I, I think enthusiasm is important. So, so I think that bottom one is going to be pretty good. And I've got Oakland in there, right? Because you want to get some local ranking as well. This is about the time that Google Local started to be a thing. So. Um, then the, the next most important thing is I feel like I'm kind of going like outward in for the website here. We want to start looking at the markup. We look at the title tag. I mean, the title tag is sort of the way that uh, the search engine knows like uh, semantically like what the topic of your site is. So your title tag is pretty important. Um, so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Um, just you know, just 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 be creative with it, and you'll you'll be okay. Um, and then also the same thing applies to your URL structure. So you might start with, uh, you know, just alpaca farm, buy best alpacas. You, the best is important because you don't want people to miss, you know, miss, miss, miss guess and think that you're uh, selling the worst alpacas. That happens to me all the time. Um, and you, you can again see where I'm going with this. Um, <laughs> Now this one, this one is really important, meta tags. And some of you might not know, but meta tag is actually the origin of the slang, that's so meta. Um, that came out in like the early 2000s. So when someone is actually saying, you know, that's so meta, they're actually referring to meta tags. Um, but what people actually don't know about meta tags is that meta tag is actually short for metaphysical tags because they describe like ghosts and stuff like that. They also describe the description and uh, the keywords for your website and they're really, really the most important thing for uh, ranking on search engines. Or but maybe not. This is another quote from an SEO website circa 2000. With the wrong meta tags, you can make it to the bottom, but meta tags alone do not take you to the top everywhere. Now, if anybody can tell me what that means, please find me afterwards, because to me it means nothing. But that's like some real advice out there for your, for your SEO. 
Um, so, I mean, there's the description tag, um, and uh, you can just you can put uh, you know obviously a description of what content is there, and then uh, you've also got the keywords tag, which you can put some keywords in. It's pretty simple. And at about this point, I'm going to ask Jen to pass me my phone over there for this next bit because I need to do a dramatic reading for you. Um, and so there, there's a bunch of different meta tags that allow you to specify information about ghosts and your website. And uh, there's one in particular called the meta refresh tag that you can actually use to, well, refresh and redirect your site, which nobody really uses anymore because that's dumb. Um, and uh, before I move on to that, actually, I wanted to mention that uh, this is actually what you should be going for with your keyword. Um, you can see there, imaginary restaurant website is the best imaginary restaurant website. Our restaurant is better than any restaurant. And I'm pretty sure that the search robots will, will love that. Um, and you can also stuff the, uh, the no script tag. Um, this was some advice on a, a site that talked about different colored hats. Um, they were really into like goth hats, black hats in particular. Um, I don't really know what's up with that, but they did mention that you can stuff keywords in the no script tag. And also in like HTML comments, which I'm pretty sure search engines ignore, but I like give them points for creativity. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so yeah, so back to the meta, meta refresh tag. Um, I found this really fantastic advice and I want to share it with you. Another, more creative use of the refresh tag is a fancy intro to a site. Say you wanted the page to write welcome. And then after one second, get ready. And after one more second, it should say, for a special experience. And finally, after a few seconds, the real page would be loaded. Because that's right, in 2000, people still had intro landing pages to their websites, probably with flash intros. And that was a thing. Wow, OK. Um, so yeah, this, this, this slide, actually this one's not, not, a, not, not, a, not a fuck up on my part. This is actually a legit slide. Um, I, I didn't forget to put something here because there are places that you can put keywords that people don't even have to see. That's right, and you should. So holy cow, what's going on here? <laughs> white text on a white background, ladies and gentlemen, all right? Um, also try display none by just like, you know, on, on some element somewhere. Did display none work in 2000? I actually didn't check that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and text indent minus, you know, a bazillion percent so that the, the text can be seen by the search engine but not by you. And I don't know, I feel really bad for people with screen readers around this time of, of SEO advancement, really. Um, so one thing I want to mention is don't use frames. Not only is it super 1990s, but it makes it very difficult for websites to index your search engine. Or wait a minute. Um, and uh, Flash, well, I mean, you could probably use Flash, but just keyword stuff around it. You now know how to put stuff in there and have it be totally invisible, basically, right? So that's pretty good. Uh, Java applets, I don't know why you'd still be using those, but I mean, there's pretty fun games out there. Um, but again, you, can, you know the drill. You can just sort of keyword stuff around it. Um, so now, uh, I mean, that's a little bit stuff to do with your markup. Like, I, I actually spent a whole lot of time going through the Google search results between 1999 and 2002. I, I padded a little bit around 2000 so I could get creative, looking at old websites on, and advice. And I'm actually convinced that in order to be an SEO marketing expert in the year 2000, you basically just had to, like, you know, know how to write some HTML. So why didn't I cash in? Jeez. Um, so you basically now are all SEO experts, and that's all you need to know about the topic when it comes to, like, on-page on uh, optimization. Someone talked to me about, like, quality of content and stuff, but I don't know about that. Um, so, so link building um, is the process of getting people to link to your page so that uh, when Google sees your page linked to a lot or, or Alta Vista or Yahoo or the other you know, super relevant search engines, um, they, you know, it will know that like, oh, well, a lot of people are linking to this resource. It must be really reputable. Okay, sure, that's great. Um, web rings, obviously, uh, are a way to do that, although I think as of 2000, web rings are sort of sadly going out of vogue. Um, you also ask to trade links with other websites. Um, you can just email them and be like, hey, it doesn't matter if they're related or not, just write a really convincing email and be like, hey, I know that your website is about alpaca farming, but um, I have this great web design thing. Do you want to trade links? Because I'm pretty sure that an inbound link from alpaca farms to your web development firm is going to give you the Google juice right there. Um, again, you could buy links. Um, that's super legit. And definitely, whenever you post uh, somewhere, a comment or a review, make sure you put your website. Because even though you're posting on a band review website, people definitely need to know about your alpaca farm, right? Like, you just never know. Someone could be both like you know, a good Charlotte um, enthusiast and also like be an alpaca breeder, right? Like, people are, are not just one dimensional, you know? Like, just, there's depth there. So you just got to give them the benefit of the doubt. You should just put yourself out there. 
Um, so in conclusion, uh, SEO is some really hilarious nonsense. Um, I mean, I think real talk, right? Like in real life. In 2014, I was actually looking like, okay, so now that I've done this really great blast from the past thing where I look at all the SEO from 2000, um, I, Forbes magazine publishes uh, SEO articles for 2014 talking about SEO strategy. So it's still, uh, people think it's a legit thing. I would argue it's auxiliary to good content strategy and the rest of your marketing, but this has been a lot of fun. So um, in conclusion, um, I hope that this will help get you from the left side of the graph to the right side with a smiley face. That's what I'm looking for, always smiley faces. And that's it. Thanks.